honestly, I um, I like to know if I'm in the know or not what you're going to bring up. Because mm. <clears throat> I'm addicted to X, and so I'm trolling it, but I'm wondering if you're looking at the same stuff I'm looking at. Oh, I'm curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're just voyeuristic right now. You're not posting. I'm not posting. Mm. I'm just there to spectate and grab. So, yeah. so have you started to see... I, I've been on Twitter for a long time, mm -hmm. but have you started to see like all those different people that do kind of the... The long posts, the the threads, you know the, you know ten best practices to. I don't grow see yet. any of that. What? Okay, cool. Everything is a thread. Everything <laughs> is now. It's just here. Read this for the next. You know, ten best coins invested. Ten best. You're, tips you're for probably the year. curated to what? Just like headlines and news and headlines, yeah, news. Yeah, yeah. What Elon's yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah. What you know? Sure, the, sure, sure. the politics. It's no. very mine, political. Mine is like pretty curated to. Like VC Twitter, tech Twitter, oh. crypto Twitter. Yeah. All those guys do threads. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you feel like you're getting a lot more from people you aren't following now on oh, X? Oh, yeah. I'm not following, I'm hardly following anybody. Yeah. But I, I get a lot of content. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It used yeah. to be, it used to be different. It used to be mostly my followers. Now it's right, a right, lot right. of like my not, which is not a bad thing, but now I'm getting a little concerned because like crypto's pumping. So I'm getting a lot more potential scams so right. just be careful out there be careful if you're oh if the, your twitter the scams, is filled started with, the, the scams have started back up yeah um and that's actually the first topic for today so <laughs> big part of the news that just came out was uh the bitcoin etf yeah, um, announcement go. and so yesterday hey, there was like a there was kind of like a false alarm though. a false alarm <laughs> oh man the sec really really bad bad look so um the sec's twitter account got hacked mm. yesterday or so they say. I think what ended up happening. I think they jumped the gun. They jumped the gun. And That's the conspiracy theory. And it's easy theory. to blame it on a hack. Yeah, yeah. Who who was able to resolve a hack that quickly? Exactly. They announced it. Said, oh yeah, we got hacked like immediately. Right. The best crack team. But I think they jumped the gun. Do you think it's that easy to hack Twitter? So the way that they explained it is that somebody just got access to the phone, and then once you, if you don't have like multi-factor like set up on your, which everybody should by the way, right, on all your accounts. 100%. But if you don't. Then you know if somebody gets access to your phone, they can okay. do all this. Stuff. A lot of people are getting hacked because of just um, is it phising or phishing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, phishing. Yeah, phishing schemes mm -hmm. and things like that. They'll mask saying, "Hey, um, we're going to shut down your account if you don't update this thing," mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then you authenticate through their platform, and it it, it will look like Meta or it'll look like X. Mm -hmm. mm. A lot of people get faked by that, yeah. right? Yeah. And they'll steal your password, and then yeah. then you won't have access. Yeah. But it was funny because I was seeing so many memes on like the government getting. Yeah. Like, how are you gonna protect Americans if you can't even protect your Twitter yeah. account, your ex account? Yeah. yeah, that's not a good look. Like if they didn't actually get hacked and they're just blaming the hack, yeah. what you're blaming is actually worse than the reality. <laughs> <It's> worse. <laughs> but good news is it did get announced today officially. Wow. So Bitcoin ETF. Huge. Um, wow. It's a big thing. In so the is, is Bitcoin spiking today? Um, I don't know what the Ethereum is spiking wow. off the news, and I think the reason is it's moving is because now people think. Bitcoin got theirs. So Ethereum's going to get their ETF. Yeah, of course. Um, so I think it's moving, but we'll see. I mean, crypto's arrived, baby. Crypto is it's arrived. Here to stay. It's back. <laughs> it's, it's back. back. Are you excited? I mean, it was almost dead in the water. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. pretty much lifeless. Yeah. Uh, but you know, those who were those who were super bullish, like, were true disciples. They were they were definitely focused, and uh, I wasn't. Can I just be the guy to say I, I was? I had I'm no skeptical. belief it was coming mm -hmm. back. Yeah. I thought that season was done, um, but uh, look, I'm happy to say when I'm wrong, look, it's back. That's good. So Arun, are we seeing like the, the whole industry rise from the tide here? Mm -hmm. Like we're talking like Chainlink, Solana, um, Polkadot, mm -hmm. I don't know, like all the other projects that are maybe not um, on Bitcoin's level yet, but you know, all the secondary ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the market is kind of moving together. I think what happened was with the anticipation of the ETF, the market kind of went in and now it's kind of priced in. So I don't know how much more will move, but we also have the Bitcoin halving, which is like another big marker in crypto cycle. Mm -hmm. So that is like the next. So this is kind of like, in my mind, like a teaser to what's to come. And then now we have the next wave. So now all these projects are kind of moving together. So it's a really interesting time. So you're going to start hearing a lot more. It's so break it down. Why is this significant um, yeah. that it's incorporated into an ETF? Why, yeah, why, educate why us. Why are we mm -hmm. saying like, oh, it's arrived? Like what's the significance of this? So I think, so the biggest thing right now is, and I always compare this to like what I do versus what my mom and dad can do, right? So like my mom and dad, like this whole idea of crypto, being able to like maintain your own addresses, private keys, all that is very complicated. So a lot of people, even the going through Coinbase is still a little bit complicated. So investing into Bitcoin, still not there for everybody, right? 
Uh, but an ETF allows people to not have to manage any of that and still get exposure into investing in Bitcoin. So the thing that got announced today is a spot ETF for Bitcoin, which means they'll actually be holding like Bitcoin. Yep. And then you can invest in that now. So now you can invest in an entity that is holding Bitcoin. That is security, mm -hmm. more stability. Um, but this actually, I mean, the whole crypto market wins out of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, Coinbase, mm -hmm. all the providers, different things like that, they uh, they all win. So it's, it is a big it's a big day for crypto. Yeah, it's a big day for crypto. And we'll see. I mean, like now that the money's starting to come back, now people are building people that this is a call to all the people that are building front end services for crypto. Come That's on. what we need. Come we need on. to make it easier for people to use crypto. There's yeah. infrastructure out there, but yep. we need to make it easier for my mom. So this is, <laughs> this is a call to help my mom get into crypto. Does this move the needle at all? I mean, um, this this moves the needle in terms of cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin, obviously, as an asset class, mm -hmm. as an investable mm -hmm. asset class. Mm -hmm. But the promise of crypto is, was way more than that, or is way more than mm -hmm. that, right? Um, pro programmable fintech, essentially pro programmable finance, uh, the blockchain. Mm -hmm. ha does it do anything for that, or you know, business as usual on that front? I think it gives it more credibility, probably. So right. then, now that the builders that are doing it um, can continue doing that work to try and make it, you know, a platform that's usable. Um, I think the the tough part about it is like you're kind of going against the government, right? With exactly. This. So it's like, there's just going to be so much tension to actually fulfill the dream. Um, so we'll see, this is a good step, right? This is a part of the government saying, okay, well, you know, let's see if we can find a middle ground. And maybe this is the first step into... It is interesting though, right? Uh, at a philosophical level, like the whole promise of crypto was a little bit like we don't need the government mm -hmm. correct. right yeah so it's like oh this is decentralized we don't need no government mm -hmm. but now it's been like and partly because of coinbase um you know taking this stance of like no no at some point we need to work with the government right <laughs> you know what i mean so it's like it's centralized decentralized right 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 because right. <laughs> if it's being regulated then it's not fully decentralized yeah. anymore right yeah <laughs> i think it's the i think it's the classic case of what do you need a government to be and what don't you need a government to be mm. it's the level of control we all i don't think even a, a like a deep conservative thinks we need no government right we need a government but we need a small a government as small as possible yeah. mm -hmm. and what does the government serve i think in crypto what we see is the government serves regulation mm -hmm. the government serves security Otherwise, it becomes the Wild West and, mm. you know, uh, the bad actors are in there and then no one trusts it at all. But if there is a sense of security, it's when the government has an overreach that all of a sudden something is corruptible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. True. No. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, well, that was the first topic on crypto. I don't, want, I don't want to do too much on crypto, <laughs> but I want to jump into... You don't into, want to make this a crypto I don't pod. want to make it a crypto thing. People okay. think I'm shilling a coin or something. So um, <laughs> I do want to talk about, and you weren't here for the last part when we talked about AI companions, but a big one that just got announced is Rabbit. I don't know if either of you guys saw the announcement no. for that. tell us. Okay, so Rabbit is essentially, I'll show you guys a video oh. of what they're um, announcing, but okay. this is the next big thing in, in AI. And let me show you the demo part of it. But this is that's a form factor right there. This and so it's essentially a it looks faster, like a phone. Yeah. So it basically does. And it's a faster chat GPT kind of. And so the whole idea is that it does. It's a call, handheld. It's a handheld. You press it like a walk, Yeah, you press like a walkie talkie. It has a camera on it, so you can do vision. Right. Um, and you basically ask it all the things that you would hope to ask as an assistant. And it's not just connected to like a few apps, like a, it can connect to all your apps. You give it access to everything. Like Google Calendar? Like Google Calendar, okay. Spotify, travel, everything. So Is that a wheel? Is that a scroll wheel? Yeah, I don't know what that scroll wheel is, but I'm, pre I'm assuming it's, like it's a, a scroll wheel. wheel so that you can kind of like go through the text as it is. And then like you could just screen. scroll the screen. Right, okay. right, yeah. Okay. So it looks, you know, I don't know how many people want design, this huh? on top of their... The hardware, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like a fidget spinner. Why don't, why don't you know they just mean? create an app in iPhone? Right. <laughs> exactly. And so that's, that was my initial thought. But um, a lot of there's a lot of uh, buzz. buzz about this. So it's very interesting to see. I wonder what's know, the hardware um, purpose. Like, um, why, why did they have to build a hardware tool? Oh, right. So I think the reason that the, um, the big sell about this is it's supposed to be 10 times faster than when you would go to ChatGPT right now to go ask a question. The response time is like, so it feels a little bit more like this kind of conversation. So mm -hmm. I ask you something and you're able to respond really quickly. Um, and so like, for example, when they say like, order me an Uber and then it orders an Uber and it shows them, but it says, oh, I need it for six people and two pieces of luggage. And then it can kind of do that quickly, go to your Uber app, set the ride. and then Is this confirm. built on ChatGPT? I think it might be, but yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So, but, they, but they've got hardware. Like what chip are they using? What tech are they using? 
I think that's all there is, but I haven't looked too much okay. into their hardware, yeah. But yeah. Um, it's interesting. Would you guys use an AI companion app? Well, like I just this? don't like that there's another piece of hardware. Exactly. Like you don't want to have a phone like, and I, this. I would want this to be integrated with uh, iPhone, yeah. right? just an iPhone app. Yeah. So I can open up Rabbit app and then just do everything that they're saying. Yeah. Exactly. It can do. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because like, I feel like this is a phone, a thing that Apple and Google is just going to make obsolete very soon. But For the, sure. The, but the buzz is, is crazy. I don't really? know. Really? What, What's yeah. the price point? Uh, 199. It's a very oh, good price point. No subscription model. Okay. Very, very interesting. So it's interesting, right? Because, um, my father-in-law just got the Ray-Bans mm. from Meta. Oh yeah. And so we were testing that out. It's pretty rudimentary. Mm. Like, uh, interesting. You know, the cool factor is that you can literally just, uh, click or talk to it mm -hmm. to have it start recording and it just records what you see. <clears throat> so that's kind of a cool factor. Um, uh, or take a picture just through what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, it's that's really it's like a it's a it's a camera on your face, right? <laughs> it's like you so, know, it's not fully multimodal AI, mm -hmm. here, right? Yeah. Know? So this this to me, the coloring, the shape, the the functionality, the button, the the, uh, the scroll wheel, mm -hmm. uh, it looks to me it's appealing to teenagers, mm. and maybe that's their gameplay. At the price point of one ninety nine, it's a low entry. It's you know orange. It's it's really going to appeal, I think, to a teenager, and maybe they're looking to form a new behavior. Even the model is very teenagery, mm -hmm. uh, the guy using it, and so maybe they're looking futuristic to yeah. maybe get a wedge in the market that win Apple Gen has. Yeah. Win Gen Z, mm -hmm. and uh, because I can't imagine any of us carrying a phone and that. No, yeah. no, no. I'm, I'm like we slimmed. That. We've actually spent the last you know twenty years slimming down from a wallet to mm -hmm. everything's mm -hmm. on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even carry a wallet. Everything's on the phone, and so right. Yeah. Um. I, I don't. I don't know what the the plan is. And when you say it's like, it's it's like, popping. Yeah. Where? Who? What? what what's your metrics on for popping right now? That's true. On X. Yeah. On X. On X. Yeah. So they're just placing ads. Uh. Well, it's people. You know, verify people that are talking about it. So, so they've paid off verify people. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And now everybody can, yeah, maybe everybody's, you know. Yeah, I get um, really, really wary of what's viral and what's popping off. Mm. Like, how? Where's the metric? Show me. That's Who's good. using this? How many sales yeah. have you had? How many users do you have? Uh, I need hard data. Yeah, that makes sense. But I mean, the, the next wave right now is AI robotics. Like, um, I think the, the predictions, you know, I was listening to the All In podcast and they were talking about predictions. The big one is um, smart home automations, mm. and which is big for me because I love, have you ever seen that Disney movie, Smart Home? Oh, yeah. Oh, Heck yeah. It's like my dream. Oh, I don't know. If, <laughs> I haven't seen it, guys. So it's, it's basically peak millennials. It's yeah, peak it really millennials. is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's basically like, I think they had like uh, an AI assistant mm -hmm. that just controlled everything in the house. Like anything you would want, <clears throat> this assistant, basically right. like for your mom, it would just do it. You want food, right. it'll make it for you. You want to clean your room, it'll do it for you. Like okay. everything was part of the house so your your whole house is fully automated but now that's what i think is like the push so ces just happened and i can show you guys some clips from stuff but a lot of the stuff that was announced there was a lot of ai robotics so. i'm definitely down for for smart home mm -hmm. I, I love, love smart, smart home, home tech home. Yeah. Great. like that sort of thing you know like because the thing i love about a car is how i can have it in the driveway and even this morning like hey let's defrost the windows mm -hmm. before yeah. i get in there mm -hmm. oh, i'm all about that that kind of stuff you know in the home you what know, you, set the what, temperature, what, that what kind of stuff. All, we use Google Home. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, everything's connected via Google in, in our home. And yeah. I can, from cameras to thermostat, um, we have it all connected in one app. It's actually pretty good. What do you guys use? Just pretty much the Nest. Yeah. You know, which, which is the, Google. Yeah. The temperature, you know, the Nest yeah. and the cameras, you know, all that goes to the phone. And you have Nest cameras too. Nest. Uh, I have Arlo cameras. Oh, so you, you open up two different I've apps. got two different apps. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. I don't love that, but mm -hmm. I already invested. I'm not really ready to reinvest to change all the cameras, you know? Yep. Yeah. Do you stay in one <clears throat> ecosystem? I'm Pretty much. On, yeah, I'm trying um, to. Even all the way to my uh, Christmas lights. Oh, cool. They all go through, yeah, some of my time lights and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Just but Google I would home. love the Roomba. I would love the cameras. I would love the, mm -hmm. the, the temperature, the thermostat. I'd love it all in one. Yeah. 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 Th this is where I feel like um, there's real uh, market opportunity for AI uh, in, in smart homes. I think that's a good call. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we all spend so much time in our homes and there's a clear opportunity for AI to revolutionize yeah. how we do living. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, at home. Yeah. So yeah. I love that. Yeah. What have you pulled up now? So this is, I think it might be 
uh, Samsung or LG. So this is their so prototype. So we got to get our editors to kind of put up these Cut, clips. Yeah, we got to yeah, start cutting while in. we're talking about it, yeah. Um, and so there's this little ball that kind of, I'll just describe it for the audience just in case we don't get it. But there's a little ball that kind of goes around. Same thing, multimodal vision. It's like uh, a little camera, robot. It's a little projector. And it kind of just follows you around. I think one of the cool ones was that your pet's at home. It goes in. It feeds your pet, you know, by accessing other things that are automatable in your home. Um, and so... Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, I don't know. We'll see what actually ends up coming out, but like it's a home assistant. Yeah, Bali. Yeah, Bali. Yeah, kind of a <laughs> Bali. Kind of that, that's that's a cool name. I would have called a baller. <laughs> oh, yeah. but are you guys comfortable with an assistant that's always on in your home? I'll be honest with you. I get annoyed by the Roomba following me around. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's like just attracted to where I am, but it keeps coming into my you know, office and all that kind of stuff. So, I don't know. I'm not loving that, uh, but. Sure. Another one at CES that just came out is AI hologram. So this I that think, is wild. Yeah. So this you, this is insane. I think this is the next version of uh, you know Zoom that's going to come out. You're going to have these Stop giant it. pods. You that, literally could be talking to somebody face to face. Yeah. From anywhere in the world. No. Yeah. And they look like they're in that little booth. No, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder uh, the. There's no delay either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty quick. It's pretty impressive. I wonder, like, the physiological impact on this versus, like, putting goggles and having a metaverse mm-hmm. experience. I wonder, you know, brain function-wise, emotionally, is there a deeper connection, right, with, like, a hologram versus what maybe Meta is trying to build? There's definitely a, I would say right now, if you weren't looking at that dude and you're looking at the hologram, mm-hmm. You could feel like you're literally having a connection with the actual person from distance. So my question is, will there be added tech where it's like, make my hologram thinner? <laughs> Pro- probably, of course. Of make course. my hologram we're all, we're all yeah, <laughs> make my hologram have more hair. Okay, wait, wait. So, so this is like a box, right? Mm-hmm. So right. Uh, would you install this in your home? Yeah, I don't know. Then, it's not very accessible, but maybe in like an office. So you, you put know? it in a home office yeah. and then, oh, so, okay. All right. Uh, real use case, um, Overflow has offices in Seattle, San Francisco, and um, Birmingham, mm-hmm. right? And so I sit in San Francisco, and so I'm going to have a box in my Seattle office, in my Birmingham office. Whenever I want to address the staff, I come up Wow! <laughs> in that box, and they exactly. all kind of... We well, how about all this? Hands how about of... this? We just put a box on stage and I preach in every campus. Yeah, there you go. Would you honestly? Would you do that? No, all jokes yeah, aside. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. That'd be cool. That would be really cool, actually. Like if it if it's like a you know not that's just one view. What if it's like the sides as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. It'd be cool because you can kind of create a spherical version of this, so you can even track your walking. Yes. Mm. Back and forth on the stage. Let's right? do it. Yeah. Um, a that motorized cool. version that goes with it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a motorized version. That so when be... I move, it moves. Yeah. Do you think that would unlock I, a I, lot? I feel like that fidelity, that level of fidelity actually makes a difference. Yeah. 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 A screen versus that, mm-hmm. I think, would yeah. make the difference. Actually, all the way to even facilitating the altar call. Yeah. Because mm. if you could get some sort of screen look back for you... Wow. To see who responded, right? So big LED on your callback yeah. screens from the back where you can see, see every it. Location. At least you can see just generally, oh, wow, there's 12 people in London that's forward right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, I see you. No, literally. Right. Like I, I see, see you. you right now. Mm-hmm. And you're extending your hand. Yeah. And you're not actually touching them, obviously. Right. But like they're, they're, that is much more high fidelity. That's cool. Much more high fidelity. I think it makes connection, right? You're not just spectator. You're involved. And you guys talk about it all the time, like deeper connections. Deeper connections. Mm-hmm. And like these, I think AI is, and AI and technology that we're, we're getting now is getting to that point. And like you said, I don't, I don't know if goggles is ever going to get me to the point where I feel like, you know, I'm properly talking to somebody. But like something like this, or it's like I'm just in my natural state and I can kind of see somebody else. That's where I think, you know, with uh, the, the Vision Pro, I think just the transparency, they've tried to make it more like less barrier mm-hmm, between mm-hmm. people, but I still think you're wearing something. Yeah. You have to get into something. It's so bulky. If you're wearing something, also I think there is something to the mixed reality that's a little bit more magical. Mm. Because when you're wearing something, you could be pretending like you are um, doing something while still sitting down, which I think still causes the disconnect with reality, mm-hmm. right? Whereas this hologram in a church context, 
um, when you're responding to an altar call and you're actually, and especially if the hologram is configured in a way where it's your actual like height, Mm -hmm. right? And uh, like depth, breadth, um, it creates a much more realistic. Yeah. It's it's much closer to reality. I guess that's what people are looking for, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's the authenticity of it actually being real. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. I think makes a difference. Yeah, mm. I definitely think though, if you were going for deeper connection, this is the most right here. This hologram yeah. would be the deepest connection there is today. So if you're interested, it's uh, AI power hologram by Hollow Connects. Um, that's the next big one. And I think outside of that, oh, it's a lot. No, this thing I saw too. The 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 clear. Oh, uh, the TV. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, TV technology is getting crazy. Come on. The so transparent. What, does that do? what is that? It's a transparent TV. Yeah. Basically wow. like a window. Wow. Check that out. A transparent, like it looks like just a piece of glass, but that's yeah. your television. Wow. That's your LED. That's cool. That's, that's crazy. That's cool for the home. Yeah. yeah. They were also saying there was like a, a solar panel that um, is transparent. Oh, windows. Yeah, windows for solar Eventually panels. Eventually our windows will be the solar panel. Hey, what a time to be alive, huh? What a really? time to be alive. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like, you know, uh, the last decade's been like... Um, Crypto's back. <laughs> no, well, we got clean, been, like, like clean. Inno- innovation has been like, ooh, uh, I can order food to my house. Right, yeah, right. Like, that's like been innovation, but now we're talking about like transparent TV right. and all that type of stuff. Holograms and you know? scrollable rabbits. You remember when we were going with those flying cars? We were supposed to have flying cars by now. <laughs> oh, yeah. they're coming still. They're coming, yeah. They're, they're, coming. De- they're definitely they're still definitely, coming. I'm yeah. signing up. Didn't no, you know that? I'm definitely signing up. Like everything. Yes. Yeah. A little personal drone. I think that somebody was talking about just being able to take a flight from here to Australia or here to like Japan in like 30 minutes and that just be the norm yes is that's what i'm waiting for. wait what yep. here to japan in 30 minutes yeah did you see the stuff yes. that it's um, from new how? york to london in i think 60 minutes or something. yeah, yeah, like, yeah, wow. yeah. this new how? plane yeah it's this new plane and like, why is that fast yeah and then elon's like eventual plan is to do spacex but it just goes over um the atmosphere and it comes back down so then now you can do travel like that you can go up and down up and down just quickly everywhere well, in the because world. then you that's use the earth goal. rotation yeah. to your advantage that's a dream. Wonderful. Up, we down. can see the tr- we can see the whole world, which is everybody's dream, right? You work to be able to travel and see the world, and yeah, I don't know how hard that is to time though. Mm-hmm. If you're up too long, then you end up in Africa when you were <laughs> aiming for Italy or something, you know. <laughs> I don't know. How it works. <laughs> yeah, no, no. but it's Guys, exciting. We're, go- we're going up again because I just came in on a flight this week oh, right. to Houston and. As we were coming down, it was too windy, so we had to do a loop. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? So if you're coming down from space and you have to go back up, like <laughs> that might be a little bit hard. <laughs> all right, well, that's great. That was like all the, the latest and greatest in tech. I don't know if you guys saw anything else that you want to talk about, but if not, I kind of wanted to jump into some educational stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. go to the education. And I wanted to talk about um, pivoting. Um, and so I know I have a lot of um, friends that are kind of doing startups. I'm looking into some stuff. Um, but you guys have kind of built a lot so far. Can we talk about pivoting, yeah. some stories um, as you guys have been building the church, as you've been building Overflow, um, where you've had like crucial decisions or moments where you've had to pivot? Would you say the church has pivoted, Vive? Well, I, I'd like to, I would say we had a culture of having to pivot, but it depends on what pivoting you're talking about. Sure. Are, you, are you pivoting uh, to a new product, like as in quitting? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is quitting actually, is pivoting just a nice way to say I'm quitting? Interesting, yeah. Um, well, when do you pivot or when do you push? When do you keep pushing through with a product and keep pushing in on it even though you're not seeing the results? Or when do you call it quits and say, hey, the horse is dead, dismount? Yeah. Mm. That's like I think there are little pivots that you make along the way, but I think the context you're talking about is when is when is my idea not an idea anymore mm. and when do I pivot? Yeah. Or when do I prolong the inevitable and keep going because maybe prolonging is actually pushing through and there's breakthrough. Yeah, let's right. talk about both actually, because maybe there's a moment in between, like a partial pivot, where it's yeah. like maybe I'm not completely quitting, but it's like how do I reframe this idea? That I think that's essential. Mm-hmm. I think the constant partial pivots is the iterations. Mm-hmm. So if you're not willing to pivot on an idea, then maybe you're just stuck. You're yeah. pretty stubborn. But I think you have to have a, a willingness to pivot as you get educated, as you actually understand the market more. Mm-hmm. I think you've got to you know, maybe stay true to an element of, of why, the mission, but there's a pivot in the process. Mm-hmm. However, I think um, big pivots, that's that's just quitting sometimes. Or maybe the energy went out of it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, when I think about it in the context of the church, it's really interesting, right? Because the premise of the church is almost like 
an unfair advantage purpose wise because we already know that it's going to last. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's not like we're testing product market. Fit. Right, right. Like we know that in general, the church at large is going to be the, the only lasting thing mm-hmm. that we have on this planet. So there is this kind of like cool perspective there. Um, in saying that, I think it's a methodology of the church if you're effective mm-hmm. um, in that and how viable uh, that specific um, part that you play in the kingdom is. Uh, and so in the context of Vive, as I reflect on it, there's been a lot of pivots in the sense of um, micro pivots in our the way we do church so yep. that we can be more effective, yep. mm-hmm. right? I think overall... Um, you know, our our overall product and platform that we've built has largely stayed consistent though, mm-hmm. right? Like our language, our values, our style yeah. generally is is the same. So if there was a one-for-one analogy with like a tech platform or product, I would say generally people probably wouldn't have perceived the vibe as pivoting ever, right? Right. It would just be more like improvement mm-hmm. and progression. Yeah. And I think what, when I think about in the faith space pivoting, there was a, there was a season where being a pastor was trendy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, it was during the Carl Lentz era and he he had the ability to make pastoring trendy. So you had all these guys go, well, I'm going to be a pastor. I'm going to yeah. quit my job. I'm going to start a church. And they realized, oh, it's more than wearing a leather jacket and skinny jeans. Exactly. It's actually leadership. And, and so their pivoting was actually, oh, this is too hard. I'm quitting. And so I think, you know, there, there requires in everything, whether it's starting a church or starting a business, if you don't have the push through, uh, you're not going to make it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say too, is that if the premise of the pivot question is, is my idea viable or not in the church space specifically, I actually think it should lead more pastors to this mindset of M&A. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. I actually think if I just think about the Bay Area alone, I'm not going to call out any specific pastors, but like, no. <laughs> but like, if I just think about the Bay Area alone, there are like a handful of pastors that um, kind of already kind of learn from us and glean from, from Vive that I'm like, you know what, at the end of the day, at some point, these should just like consolidate as Vive campuses, to be mm-hmm. honest, like right. if it was going to be more effective, right. right? Obviously there has to be kind of an affinity and a chemistry <laughs> and an alignment, but in general... And an invitation. Yeah, and an invitation. But, but I guess, um, let me remove it from Vive. In general, I, I feel like in the church space, there are a lot of... Um, 127 person churches mm-hmm. yeah. that started off as a church plant that probably should have been a campus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, <laughs> I mean? think that's a great idea. I think the if the pivot comes from a realization, I'm maybe not that, that fit of that role. Okay. Let's take it out of the church. Maybe I'm not CEO material. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because it was sexy to be a CEO. So I thought I'll, but the CEO role isn't the fit. Maybe you're called to be on the team, but not lead the team. Mm. If you're not in your fit, you will always feel ineffective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when you're in your fit, even if it's not the sexy role, say as the CEO, but you're on, you're so effective as, you know, within a team or leading a team within the the organization. And that is your fit. I think you're going to have so much more fulfillment. Yeah, I agree. Because I, I, I do resonate a lot with what you're saying, Pastor Adam, around, pivot versus the push, because when you are called to be that visionary, yes, right. I think most visionaries wouldn't actually look back and be like, man, I pivoted so many times. Mm -hmm. Like they had a vision, they had a conviction and they just pushed through. Maybe there was little iterations along the way, but most of the time when you see somebody with the second, third, fourth pivot, what ends up happening is they sell to a bigger company. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. And I don't think that's actually wrong Mm -hmm. because some people they're, they're called to like, go on that journey of little innovations that's supposed to be part of a bigger picture Um, because that consolidation, it's not always bad, right? That consolidation leads to more effectiveness, more scale, being able to serve more people. Um, And so that's kind of an observation that I think I have. Yeah, and I think it's your your ability to push which actually helps you handle pivots. Yeah. So pivots will will drain energy. Mm. Mm. A a pivot is an energy burner because I've had to put so much energy a pivot can definitely diffuse energy if we have to restart or rehash. Mm-hmm. But if you've got a mindset, I'm pushing through no matter what, well, Good. then you'll embrace the pivot. Uh, but can your team handle that many pivots? Yeah. yeah. Can I bring up an example from the church? So when I um, 
when I was when I was serving, I was serving at we were serving at the JCC during production, um, yeah. and then COVID hit, and then the church as a whole, I think all churches kind of had to pivot from what do we do? We pause church or do we you know do an online thing? Um, and then the, the kind of like online church started to grow, and then it was there was like a pivot to online church, but then back to church. Do you, can you talk about that kind of segue and like how <laughs> yeah. that if you can like how how that was because like it seemed like the online church was like maybe that's the way to go right you can reach the masses and that's how I still got PTSD uh, strong from from that era <laughs> oh, yeah. look I think what what happened this is my big time synopsis what happened in uh, and we were positioned well we were already established online with yeah. an online presence yeah. so it kind of worked for us for several weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, I know it was a hard pivot for a lot of churches that had no online presence. So there was a lot of companies that bet, made big money to really just give them an online package, you mm-hmm. know, that kind of thing. However, what we found is that it created a, I would say, a cadency to Christianity that was casual. Mm-hmm. You could you could kind of just flick on church whenever you wanted in your pajamas. You could peruse different uh, services from different churches and, you know, obviously uh, Elevation Church it was you'd watch Elevation Church and your church. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. everyone was, you know, kind of pooling towards the same thing. And then I would hear pastors who were saying, hey, we're never going back in person again. Mm-hmm. More because they had uh, fictitious numbers. Mm-hmm. You know, they were vanity metrics. Vanity mm-hmm. metrics. They, they, were, they were looking at, you know, numbers on Facebook. And that was like anybody who scrolled past the feed, mm-hmm. they'd be counted as a viewer. And so all of a sudden they've gone from a 60 person a church, like, I've got a 6,000 person church. My content is so good. And I'm yeah. like, bruh, it ain't. Um, you know, and, and no wonder they made those decisions because mm-hmm. it was easier. Yeah. I didn't have to pastor anybody. I could just preach to everybody. But there is no way that the church is about preaching mm. alone. Mm. The church is about pastoring. So it's good. about moving people. So it's good. about deeper connections. Mm-hmm. It's about the body of Christ. It's about growing together. It's fellowship. It's laying on of hands. It's partaking in communion. It's eating a meal. There, there is so much more about church than online. That mm-hmm. is so good because if church was really a, mainly about preaching, right. the, at the end of the day, we're not better than Netflix. No, mm. no. And that's what, <laughs> what we mean? saw. Yeah. And that's what we saw during COVID is people started out strong, like being faithful on the chat. Mm-hmm. In their, you know, pajamas, and then it was like, okay, I'm just gonna watch and not chat because chatting is actually quite annoying. There's only so many emojis you could do, and then, and then, I don't know. There's a movie on, mm. and is, 100%. is mm-hmm. listening to a sermon better than watching the movie? And so I know there's a lot of ministers out there that are still bullish on online church model mm-hmm. apps and stuff like that. But then, I would rather them say, hey, I'm gonna do some online content. I'm not doing a church because mm-hmm. it's not a church. There's no such thing as online church. Yeah. Interesting. I, I want to kind of touch on that as well with because the, the next topic was kind of like metrics that you guys follow. Did you guys have any internal metrics that you guys used to kind of track um, that online church wasn't working to the expectation that you guys had? Yeah, it was that? engagement. Mm-hmm. It was all about engagement. It wasn't about how many views, eyeballs, how many scrolls, that kind of stuff. It was really about how engaged is the church. Um, and engagement goes across many metrics. Mm-hmm. Engagement goes through generosity engagement. Is the is the church interacting? Like, is there a two way conversation, or is it just us force feeding, you know, through a screen, thinking that we're actually providing something, but without the response? It's like if I text you mm-hmm. and you don't text back, that's not a conversation. Right. That was information. Mm-hmm. And so it was. We're trying to look at how are we getting the engagement of the church. And so those metrics were tough. You know, I think the church has undergone, and, you know, I guess we could partly thank COVID for this too, uh, this era that probably wasn't actually super healthy, where it was literally all about attendance and salvations. Mm. And it would be like the Instagram post every single Sunday, right? It's like, man... 573 people saved. Yeah. And, and it's just like literally the amount of hands that people kind of raised yeah. when they said, okay, raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of this, you're just like, yeah. It's like, wait, how do we know that was a conversion? Like, I don't right. know. Um, and I think there's less pressure or less even desire for those vanity metrics anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and getting back to maybe the core of like true discipleship and metrics like giving, because giving don't lie mm. and things like that, where people are like, you know what? At the end of the day, like, these vanity metrics around my social media reach, what does that even mean? Right. <laughs> Do you remember, yeah. I just had a flashback. Do you remember, I don't know what city we're in. I think it was Austin mm. and we got an Uber and the Uber driver told us he was a pastor and he just started 
doing online church yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's like, I'm never going back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, because, you know, every Uber driver says, oh, this ain't my main job. Right, right, right. Of course. <laughs> and we're like, what is it? And he's like, I'm a pastor. We're like, well, we're pastors, you know. <laughs> and he was like, we're like, where's your church? He's like, it's online. I got my camera set up. Oh, in my I totally room. remember. I totally and, remember. And, yeah, yeah. and we're just sitting there like, okay, okay, bro. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> hey, I hope he's still going. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Yep. Yep. Um, and then I was going to say, oh, right, right, right. So, the, so these metrics that you guys were looking at, um, it was tough to do. But then um, this content that we're pushing out outside of Sunday, there's still value in that. So then did you guys think, okay, well, now we can push content outside of Sunday and then carry on the online church, maybe not the online church, but the online content part of church um, throughout the week. And then the in-person is on Sunday. Or was that... The metrics not show that, you know, the information side of thing wasn't as useful. Oh, man, you're asking the, the worst person. Okay. Because I have a love-hate relationship with anything digital online. Oh, interesting. Like, yeah. as far as church, mm -hmm. I, I'm a big believer. I am, I am very, very much an in-person gathering, in-person meetings, in-person work, in-person church. And so... Um, I do see a space for online, but more as a window into the room where everyone's having Christmas. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's not like you're actually sharing in Christmas. Like it'd be like, hey, we're doing Christmas, but you stand outside and watch in. Mm -hmm. And we'll wave to you and we'll say, hey, how good is Christmas today out there? But you're still out in the cold going, wow, that looks fun. Right. That's online. Right. And as much as we could dress up the window to make you feel like you're an immersive Christmas, you're not touching, feeling, engaging in the situation, right? That to me is online. Yeah. And so... Uh, I think there's a need for it. You know, we've got people in Istanbul, Turkey. We've got people who really have grown connected to the church and some through the, the season of COVID. Mm -hmm. And so I think being able to provide that is, it's a nicety. Right. It's not a replacement. It's a supplement. To, it's a supplement. Right. That's a great word for it. Yeah. And I think that people, it, it's cool. I, I think people were all learning um, how to, put things in its right context, right? Because I think there was like some people that felt like, oh man, church needs to scale like Apple right, and right, things like right. that. And it's kind of like, oh no, th those are apples and oranges. Those yeah. are different things, right? And you've even talked about in this past year, healthy church grows slow, mm -hmm. yep. right? Like deeper connections that just grow slow. Like it, there was this whole season in like churchdom of like scale, 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 scale. It's like, I don't know. I don't know how much that is meant to like scale that quickly, mm -hmm. right? Um, for well, you it see to it be with, healthy. I mean, right now, here's a big topic. You got Church Home, Judah Smith. They just literally moved out of their building, right. their only remaining building, out of their Kirkland building, handed it over to a guy named Russell B. Johnson, who's moving his church in. And uh, they're going online, mm. fully online. I think maybe gathering in an event center once a month once or a something month, yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, because we all know that uh, Jude has been very, very bullish on online digital. They've pumped millions into their app and he, he sees that as the future of church, um, which, you know, I love Jude. He's probably one of the best, you know, communicators out there. But our paradigms of church are probably couldn't be further apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't see the church as communication. Now, he's so gifted in an area that that's the primary purpose around what they're building. Um, and for me, I see the church as so much more than the preaching component. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that, you know, um, and, and maybe we're all coming to this realization already anyways, it's just maybe unsaid, but I think there is a understanding that, Hey, some people in the kingdom, they are definitely called to be communicators mm. the same way somebody is called to be. Um, a media personality or a reporter or an actor or an entertainer, like there is definitely people in the kingdom gifted for that. And, uh, you know, praise God if they pop off on Instagram and things like that with that gifting, because there is a place in the kingdom to be able to reach the masses through whether it's entertainment or education at scale and things like that. But the church, the local church entity is a very different thing. Right. Like, so I loved your story. You, you preached at a church recently um, in Texas. And it's like hailstorms. Crazy. It, you know, you would have never, in terms of like a national perspective, the lead pastor of this church, you'd never know. Mm. Right. But he's built 
an army of people that will still show up to a revival night in like hurricane weather. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> you so, know what I mean? so that's a church. Take, that's yeah. a church. So yeah. we're landing in Houston. The, the flight had to take off again, as I said, and it was crazy. And I'm like, I've never been to this church. It's a revival night. I'm so excited. And uh, there's, there's literally on the same night as it's hailing on the way there, hail, there's a tornado warning and there was a national championship. Yeah, mm. yeah, that, the, the Huskies versus uh, Michigan. Yeah. yeah, that's on the same night. So I'm like, okay, who's coming to <laughs> right. church? No, no, every seat, 2,000 people wow. packed in this place, packed to the wow. rafters. Wow. And I'm like, because I said, man, hey, is anybody coming to church? And he's like, oh, no, they'll be here. Wow. And it was just such a, a picture of, hey, there's something robust been built here. So good. Mm. I love it. That's church. Yeah. That's church. Yeah. You're That's building church. disciples, right? It's not convenience. And I think, you know, um, look, I, I, I think, you know, go for it, try something. But as far as church home, maybe it's going to be church home plus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're going to find another church and watch church home. Right. I don't think for sure. you're going go to beha- get a behavior where it's like, well, we'll just come together once a month. No. Right. And, and I think that's like the, the thing, right? It's kind of like uh, if we can continue to innovate and we're, we're you know, all these different type of things, it's disruptive, yep. but there's going to be a settling, mm-hmm. right? At the end of the day, and we're going to be able to categorize things in its rightful category so it could be effective, yeah. right? It's like, oh, okay, cool. This thing is this, this is entertainment or this is education at scale, or this is, um, you know, theosu. They're trying to do theology at scale. And th- there's a place in a kingdom for all but of But when that. do you take tech too far? Mm. Like when does technology go too far when our technology is replacing the fundamental rather than adding conveniences and scaling and accelerating something? Well, I think in the church space, it should be a bit more clearer than even the the secular space in that shouldn't we go to the Bible, right? Mm. I think, (laughs) well, I think we should go to the Bible, but I also think that we take tech too far when we replace the in-person gathering. Mm. Mm. Like if I can help and assist the in-person gathering, if I can make it more convenient to gather, but the gather is the You're key talking component. about church specifically or just generally? No, I'm talking in church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Which then obviously 100%. applies into other areas, but I think we can take tech too far. But let's say we take it a step further and this hologram technology advances to the point where it's not one box, it's an entire building. Yep. And now I can, I'm not in person, but I'm part of the congregation as a hologram. Do you think that from was, your home? From my home. So you're not the preacher. You're the the yeah. So you can you're a you're hologram a on stage, and the congregant also is. And you're moving around. And we're moving around in this space, and yeah. we're part of it. I think that there is okay. So can we break bread? And can we? That's where know, I go so to. It's physical food. food. Okay. I go to food. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, because it's tactile. The kingdom right, right. is tactile. Mm-hmm. There is a tangible element. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there is a proximity too. So, you know, you see in. Uh, there's two elements. It's both and. It's not either or. So, you know, Jesus said to the Roman centurion who, who asked Jesus to come and pray, he's like, hey, your faith has made them well. And they already healed. Jesus wasn't even there. They, they were healed. But then there's also, you know, the disciples. Peter would walk and they would lay the sick and his shadow would go over them and they get healed. Mm. So the Bible says where two or three gather in my name, I'm there in your midst. So there is an element of the gathering that cannot be substituted, I think, in the body of Christ. Oh, Good. No, that makes sense. And I think, I think there's a portion of this where, like you said, it's going to be an addition. So how can we have the in-person, which is huge, yep. and then how can we build something that's outside of it that brings that reach, that brings you back to church so that you can yes. grow that community? So I do believe what I get excited about, you know, the potential, say, of a hologram uh, moment for, from a stage, that'd be fun to exercise as long as we still have in-campus pastors. Mm-hmm. It's not a replacement, it's an addition. Yeah. Would you call it a supplement? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And then so, and then there's other things that are coming out, like if, if you've seen um, AI companions, but more, you know, fully digital, but there could be like, um, you know, devotionals where you have like somebody that you can go talk to for help. You can yep. go, you know, have like a, a midweek group, but it's an AI, so you can kind of scale the midweek leaders maybe yes. through AI or something like that. Um, so that'd be interesting to see. But that'd like be that's all outside of it, but it's just a way to scale. I don't know if you can scale pastoring outside of that, maybe because like the same reason you need that in-person connection to be able yep. to pastor. Yep. Um, but there is some concepts out there that are now right now doing it in the secular space, kind of being able to create companionship through AI that maybe we can slip. I think slip a big in. question is, do we want to? Mm. Exactly. Do, how many people out there want to not go to church? Mm. I like 
seeing people. Mm -hmm. I like being around yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. like the high five. I like the hug. I like the connection. I like chatting it up. Yeah, definitely. Do I do I actually want, or have we just decided that people want to stay away and stay in their little box and be isolated? Mm -hmm. Why is tech always moving now towards isolation mm -hmm. instead of gathering? Yeah, I think maybe uh, a part of the kingdom thought that church could be like Netflix and Amazon Prime, but church actually needs to be more like the NFL and college football, mm -hmm. right? Like if we're going to scale it, cool, but we're scaling it in a way where we're still bringing people together, mm -hmm. right? right? Sports. So I had this conversation with uh, our youth pastor, Ben, and, and we're talking about our favorite restaurants and I was talking about my favorite restaurant on the planet is uh, Morimoto, Maui. Mm -hmm. And he's like, is the food that good? I said, well, the food is good. I've had better food, but the ambience, mm -hmm. yeah. you're literally 100 yeah. feet from the ocean mm -hmm. and the weather's epic and the stuff. So I'm talking about the ambience and he's getting like, I was like, I got to try that. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you, what was he? He's like, I got to try that because of the ambience. So I put a big factor on ambience, feel, atmosphere, environment, as much as the food. Mm -hmm. And so I think what we actually underplay is atmosphere. Do we want to eat the finest food in our home? Mm. No. So, but that's where tech's going. Like, hey, live in your little AI bubble right. here and have it ordered to you. Right. So you're sitting in a little fake room eating the nice food, but you're actually not in the environment. Right. Yeah. You don't have the fuel. You don't have the temperature. You don't have the smells. 100%. All that stuff. Is important. Yep. Yeah, that's so well said. I think at atmosphere and ambiance is atmosphere. like atmosphere. You can't you can't really replicate no, that, right? No. Like that that idea of you going like soccer like you were games. just in Japan, right? So yeah. You, you don't want to go to Japan on your goggles, <laughs> right? The right. best like, thing we could, we could probably maybe make the sounds. Mm -hmm. Um, you could probably get a device to give you some kind of the scent. Yeah. Um, but it's very hard it's to get It's still synthetic. It's still synthetic. You just it's, know it's, it's not synthetic. there. Yeah, it's exactly. just not real. Like going to a sports game, like an actual championship, being there in that moment when your team yes. wins versus you're Which at home. Which is worse viewing than at home. Right, You get right. a better view Way at home. Worse. That is, yeah, like but you don't get the atmosphere. You don't get it. And like, I think that's a great comparison. Like the, the NFL. hot dog. You got to be like the NFL. You got to be. <laughs> yes. Creating a product that's so good, not that not, people don't want to, they want to be there. They want to yeah. be in that moment. And, and oh, actually, sports is a good analogy, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, just like you said, we all went to the F1 yep. in mm -hmm. Miami. And it's definitely worse yeah, watching it. Yeah. It's horrible. Live. Because like, you just, you just you see know. one turn. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, barely. Uh, for like a second. And then everybody Wait, still oh, has their iPhones. Wait. No, no, but, <laughs> that's that, but, but that's the point, right? Um, yes. That's cool. Uh, we're there. We're in the energy. Yep. There's like, thousands and thousands of people there so it's awesome you got all the and the rivalry yeah the rivalry because you're wearing your jersey they wear yeah, their jersey yeah. it's community you're, you're building deeper connections there all that type of stuff but you still have technology to supplement you mm -hmm. got the big screens you got your iphones you got all the metrics the stats you got the leaderboards all that type of stuff still enhanced through technology when you go to an nfl game you still got the megatron you still got all the the technological aspects that make it um, an even better experience in person. Yeah, You know that that rivalry thing is, a, is an interesting thing mm. because as we were coming back from Houston, there were obviously people in their Michigan shirts yeah, and people and the in their, shirts. Yeah, their Husky shirts. And I'm like, I'm saying to, to Ben, I'm like, hey, man, these fans are crazy. They're, they're crazy. They've flown all that way for a game. I almost mm. did. Oh, really? Like, yeah, I almost did. Wow. <laughs> I'm thinking, are people that passionate about their church because most of the time not no. <laughs> right but if if you had a healthy rivalry with another church hmm. would you be more passionate about your church because mm. we know our enemy is the enemy mm -hmm. but the end it's not like michigan's an enemy they're a rival right everyone's right, playing right. football yeah, yeah, yeah so should we have more rivalry between churches hmm. healthy competition is what you're saying healthy comp we're all playing football right but i got church pride yeah, yeah. Mm. What you're saying is we're all team football. We want to increase the value of this sport. We're team Jesus. Right. Yeah, yeah, But yeah, the yeah. way we do it is better. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like your, your idea, you, you've talked about Trench Olympics before. Church Olympics. Like would that Ooh, raise you, the tide? Yeah. But what's Trench Olympics? Olympics? I haven't heard of it. I just had, well, you know, it's like a little leadership thing. Like, hey, as a church, if we were going to enter into Church Olympics, what event would we go in? Oh, okay. Obviously um, preaching. Right. You know, I mean, without a doubt. But, you know, like would it be worship? Would it be serving? Mm -hmm. Would it be, you know... uh uh, atmosphere. What would we enter into? Say, hey, we do this better than everybody else. 
Well, that that is a good, that's a really good thought experiment, right? Because, you know, I, I'm a capitalist. I believe in the free market because I do believe that the free market uh, breeds competition and competition breeds innovation, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? And so that's why we get to enjoy companies like Apple and their products like the iPhone because the free market has produced an environment to push humans to their maximum potential to be able to produce those things. My qualm with, and I, I serve uh, 501c3 nonprofits, that's our business, right? So mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm pretty entrenched in this space. My qualm with the 501c3 space is that um, a nonprofit can exist not by being the best, but by just having one donor, mm-hmm. by tricking right. one person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like there are... Uh, 2 million nonprofits and probably 1.9 million of them need to die. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Because, because there's not a free market system. It's uh, built on philanthropy yeah. and benevolence. Yeah. And obviously I believe in generosity uh, and philanthropy, but I do think that the system is inefficient because we have a lot of wasted resources on ineffective organizations. Yeah. Mm. Right. And so this thought experiment about like, okay, how do we breed healthy competition amongst churches? That's a pretty controversial, <laughs> it really but it's a cool is. thought experiment. I like it. And I, I thought about it because it's, it's like, even the teams that suck have hardcore fans, mm-hmm. the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Right. They're diehard. <laughs> They're diehard. So it's not like it, in my mind it would work bad. I think it actually makes it people more passionate. Well, it's about mm. identity, right? Yeah. yeah. Whether you grew up in that place or right. your father was a part of it. Yeah. Right. It's not even just based on performance. Right. Yeah, I like that. But do you, do you understand, like just taking a step and understanding why fans do this, they feel like they have an impact on the game when, you know, we yes. really don't. I'm, I'm a fan. I, there you go. It, so, so therefore, yeah. church attendance wouldn't be like, huh. Eh. It would right. be like, oh no, we have an effect um, by being there in the, Right. In person. I think it's one of the things that Vibe does really well. It's like you don't just come to church. You come to church to serve the church. Yeah. And you're a part of a team, right? Yes. And so I think that's why getting plugged in is such an important part of, you know, Vibe. Yep. Um, but how, how do we do it so that like the general person feels like I'm, me coming on Sunday has an impact? You and, and you're you're also saying that it's not enough to say, hey, we're kicking the devil's butt this Sunday. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest. Let's be honest. The devil's defeated. Ooh. True. true. Well, so well, we're playing. Well, a, we're playing a winning game. Mm. So we need a rival. Mm. Yeah, I guess when you're when you're playing a rigged game, it's not as motivating. Right? It's not as right. motivating, right? <laughs> Game's already won. Set match. Devil's dead. Uh, now let's compete against each other to worship harder. Interesting. To be better. To let, show let, up more. Let's, let's keep pulling on this thread. What yeah. what, what a, a competition system? What could that look like yeah. in the church space? You're asking me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Let's go. I think, um, you know, obviously, obviously it already exists. It already exists in the worship scene. Mm -hmm. Who gets more plays? Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, sure. They have these rigged awards like the Dove Awards, which, you know, I won't go into that. Uh, But, you know, so there is already systems for this. Mm -hmm. I think that's where churches get unhealthy is in the likes on the Instagram, the posts. Is your pastor more famous than my pastor? Mm -hmm. Is he, you know, making more noise and all that kind of stuff? Um, do you have better merch? Are people wearing the merch? Um, like the football fans wearing the jerseys? I don't know. I think that there is, um, you know, maybe in, is this scaling? Is this growing? Mm -hmm. Or is it the same size? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I would love to work this out because I think there's an app that you can build to gamify Church churches. Like, honestly, you, could you put <laughs> churches in a standing together in the same area? A rating? It'd be very interesting. Well, yeah. cool and you could connect churches too, right? Yeah. Because churches are all kind of segregated, but can we connect them through this app that's like, okay, now our attendance is growing and it's healthy, right? It shouldn't be. I think it know, can be healthy. I think, I think it definitely could be healthy because it's not like, I think if you had a healthy rivalry, you'd have a healthy love for your church. So even if you weren't ranked as high as like, Ain't no way I'm going to that church. I'm mm. going to my church. Mm. And I'm going to support my pastor. I'm mm. going to support my team. Mm-hmm. You know, even if the quarterback's not doing so good, I'm still going. Yeah, I mean, and that, that's why I like uh, the free markets as well, especially the publicly traded market, because mm-hmm. uh, you do have a scorecard because you have to publish your financials. Mm-hmm. And then when you publish your financials, the market votes on you Correct. by buying or selling right. your stock. Right. right. And so there's kind of like this, um, there's a system that breed it, it, it's not only um, healthy competition, but it's healthy accountability as well, mm-hmm. right? And so, I like it. Yeah. Do you feel like this would like destroy smaller churches and then promote 
the mega church because like it would just like you would draw kind of like the Lakers right you think of the Lakers like all the fans bandwagon would you is that I'm not saying this is going to happen but like if we continue this thought experiment well team Williams still have fans in the F1 it's true they still have fans that's true you know maybe not as many as Red Bull or McLaren but they still have fans Mm -hmm. and those fans still wear their jersey and everyone's watching going why are you wearing that jersey you know but they they've had a connection or maybe their first time they watched saw a race they saw it and I think it's like that your salvation experience made you connected not just to Christ but to the body Mm -hmm. and so it's the environment that you're in that gives you an affinity um I think yeah I don't know Maybe know. we need to flesh it out a lot more, but yeah, yeah, I yeah. think... Uh, Who knows? Maybe we inspired somebody out there to build something. <laughs> build something. Come on. But I, I think the premise is rivalry is healthy. Mm. Yeah, That's my is. conclusion from being in America watching college football. Rivalry is actually healthy. Yeah. It builds community. It d- creates deeper connection. When we have a common enemy, it brings us together. Totally. Yeah, agreed. All right, guys. I think it's time. That was fun. That was fun. A lot of interesting stuff chatted about this week. <laughs> Do you want to touch on... Um, Flowcon. Flowcon. Hey, so Flowcon, by the time this episode is published, uh, you will get a link um, available to you March 6th. March 6th. Okay, March 6th. And uh, it is shaping up to be one of the best things that we've ever done. Because we're doing a hype session. My goodness. So, we've got so Flowcon, much going on. Uh, powered by Overflow in partnership with Hype Network. Yeah is um, going to be amazing because the hype session that's going to be one of the featured session, we just locked in some incredible guests. Yeah, tell them who's on the panel. Okay, so uh, part of the hype session that Pastor Adam's going to host, uh, Jens Jacob. Yes. He just uh, launched the movie. He was the executive producer. Beyond of, Death. Um, yeah, After Death. After Death. And also... Yep. The- <laughs> yep. What's Beyond Death? Is that a, is that a game? That's a sequel. That's a sequel. <laughs> <That's a sequel. laughs> After death, you yep. go beyond. Yeah, uh, beyond and, the grave, and, yep. and not just an executive producer in kind of uh, part of that Hollywood scene, but also a, a tech founder. Yeah, uh, founder of a SaaS company called Saturation yep. for um, movie making. Uh, so, so that's cool. We have uh, Lisa Lambert, yes, who manages and oversees a three billion dollar fund. Yeah, mm. uh, which is cool. Portfolio of companies, she's private incredible. Equity. She is incredible in our community for sure at Vive. So that's really, really cool. And then also we have Mackie Saturday. Let's go, uh, Mackie. Who sits on the board of Overflow. Yeah. And he is behind the brand identity of identities of companies such as Instagram, wow. such mm-hmm. as Oculus, such as Affirm. And so these are just, I mean, we got so many more friends coming. But We've got uh, Dino Rizzo coming. Dino Rizzo. So he's the founder and president of Arc Churches. He has personally uh, overseen the launch of over a thousand churches in America, so good. Uh, much of which are many of the modern churches that you know and love uh, in your local community. So it's, it's, it's set it's uh, to be an incredible day. It's going to be starting at 2 PM on March 6th. Uh, and the hype session, the feature session is going to be at 5 PM. Yep. And then we got our keynote at 7 PM. It's going to be an action packed day. Also, you really go there not just for the session sessions, but for kingdom connection. Yes, right? kingdom connection. And yep. so we're going to see hundreds of people, uh, definitely in the Silicon Valley, but people are flying in for this. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's going to be amazing. Yeah, yeah. I know the last one was was huge. The connections that were made, I saw yeah. it happening like in real time. Yeah, yes. incredible stuff. So you don't want to miss it. Sign up. Um, and so the link's coming out. Yeah, by, by the time way. this is published, I'll give you the link we'll put it in the show notes. Perfect. Sounds good. All right. Peace. Cheers, guys. Thanks, fellas. <laughs>